So that's it. The end of the Star Wars Ninology, the epic story that George Lucas started, has finally completed. It took 41 long years to tell a family drama in a galaxy far, far away. The foundational movies have concluded, but the marketing and licensing will live on for generations. Best part? There are strategies and tactics from the business side of Star Wars that we can leverage for our own force-guided marketing plans. And, well, some that we can't leverage, which is just as important to recognize. Join us on a short journey where we explore some of the brilliant marketing strategies from Star Wars that you can consider for your own content strategy. We will identify simple, smart, visual content strategies that encourage discipline, planning, and best practices for your brands. The content marketing force is with all of us. We just need to know how to use it. Here is a trilogy of stellar things that content marketers can learn from 41 years of marketing Star Wars. Stellar learning number one, content repurposing. When the film debuted in the summer of 1977, people lined up around the block to see this epic movie with spaceships and strange looking aliens. The 1975 film Jaws was the first film to be anointed as a blockbuster. Following that, the 1976 film The Omen was the second Hollywood blockbuster. If you're familiar with those films, you'll, both, you'll recall that both are in the horror genre. But in 1977, science fiction was hardly the genre that would get people standing on long lines in the summer sun. Plus, the film featured few recognizable actors, and the story was by a director best known for a fizzy film about diners and street racing. So, what was it that got people through the doors? Hint, content marketing. Producers at 20th Century Fox recognized the need to build advanced awareness and hype around the movie release. But with no internet and a limited science fiction fan base, they had few options. One thing they did have was they knew their target audience of young people read comic books. The film producers reached out to their contacts at Marvel Comics to discuss a movie adaptation. Marvel was experiencing a downturn in sales and needed all the cross promotion that they could get. Marvel created a six issue comic book series based on George Lucas's film script. They timed the release of the first three issues with the movie debut, giving readers a chance to see the first half of the movie on the printed page, but then forcing them to go to the theater to see how the movie ended. Otherwise, they'd have to wait another three full months to get those last three issues. At that point, fans realized that going to the theater was the only option, and lines began to wrap around the block. By the time the movie was out, Marvel couldn't print Star Wars comics fast enough. Not only did this rescue Marvel at a key time, it created a new marketing model of content repurposing. Film producers recognized that their core film script was a strong content asset. By allowing comic book publishers to repurpose their content in a different medium, they were cross-pollinating their intellectual property. And, as if you didn't need enough reasons to read Killing Marketing by Joe Polizzi and Robert Rose, they also created an additional revenue stream. Compared to the movie, the comics were a small revenue source for sure. But as content marketing goes, it was literally content worth paying for. Also see Utility by Jay Bear. So, what can we learn? Star Wars is revered among marketers for their expert cross-pollination across all manner of plastic objects. They guided collaboration and licensing to the next level with their partnerships with toy manufacturers, game companies, and other things that would appeal to their target demographic. They even managed to turn up their cross-marketing with Marvel Comics into a profit center. Strategy takes time. Most brands aren't patient enough to build the kind of foundation required to seed their content the way promoters of Star Wars did. It would have taken several months to build a relationship with Marvel Comics, get their first three issues produced, and time for those first three issues to launch with the movie. Many modern marketers are expected to deliver immediate results. There's not enough time to build into content marketing strategies these days. If you've ever launched a social media campaign, you know that the analytics reporting starts the day after you go live. If at all possible, 
take the time to understand the psychographics of your audience and build personas that will enable you to know where to put your marketing efforts. These disciplined best practices will help you with engagement and conversions. Taking a bit of extra time will also help you to explore marketing efforts that have potential revenue streams. Companies like Red Bull, Cleveland Clinic, Arrow Electronics, and others have famously taken their marketing beyond a simple message. But this takes time and patience, which is in short supply these days. Stellar learning number two, dominate one medium. These days, brands launch multi-channel campaigns. Brand managers hope to fish where the fish are, which makes sense for launches that are well-funded. But the money spigot usually does not remain open for long. Budgets stop flowing and campaign dollars dry up after the newness of a brand launch has faded. Today, we look at Star Wars as an epic cross-marketing juggernaut. There are movies, TV shows, animations, action figures, novels, comic books, audio books, live events, theme parks, and more. Everything ties into the same story canon for fans who appreciate complete and consistent experiences. Well, but it always wasn't this way. Star Wars was, well, a movie. Before anything else, it was just a movie. Sure, there were a few other tie-ins like the comics, but people knew that Star Wars was a movie. They focused their attention on the one thing that mattered for movie producers, specifically getting people into the movie theater. So what can we learn? Advertising, marketing, public relations, and other promotions were arrows that pointed to the box office. These were tactics that were designed to serve one medium that mattered most, in this case, film. These days, brand teams are besieged with requests to support established and emerging channels. If you listen to this old marketing podcast, you will hear Joe Polizzi and Robert Rose refer to the marketing in-joke, what's your TikTok strategy? In truth, there's nothing really wrong with TikTok and it might actually be a good channel for you to reach your audience. But for every dollar you spend on TikTok, you have to take that dollar away from something else. If you want to be on TikTok, then go strong, focus. The same goes for Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter. You must go strong in these channels to build your audience. There are good reasons to deliver your content in multiple channels. If you have the resources, your brand can customize the content to ensure relevance in each channel. But that doesn't necessarily mean you'll be successful in reaching your business goals. Multi-channel launches can be effective only if the organization maintains enough budget and staff to keep things going. By launching multiple channels at once, it could dilute your budget and force you to make tough decisions as time goes on. The social media landscape is littered with brand ha handles that have basically petered out. This can actually be a reputational liability for the brand, especially if users try to use social media to communicate with the brand. It's better to have a strong, loyal following in one channel than to have a weak presence in three. Building an audience takes time. Certain brands will try to leapfrog the process by throwing money at social media channels. This can be a good way to get started, but it rarely works when the brand is diluted over 10 or more channels or has brought an audience that really isn't that passionate about your product or service. Focus and deliver your content marketing efforts on channels that matter to your audience. Don't try to be all things to all people. Use your financial and attentional budgets on the activities and channels that will help you reach your business goals. Stellar learning number three, reward your customers with great content. Did you hear that rumor that there were subliminal messages in some of the Star Wars movie posters? If you were a Star Wars super fan, you certainly did. Movie posters are an art form that provides a wide range of creative options for movie promotions. Posters could be a single-use asset for advertising, but for certain films, they are also fertile opportunities for additional content marketing, and, like comic books, can actually be a secondary stream of revenue. The early Star Wars posters were basic tools that provided valuable information to the movie audience. These posters reinforced that the core film would be a bold science fiction adventure, 
for people who like that sort of thing. These were straightforward, clear visual messages. As the decades rolled on, Lucasfilm became more daring with these visual assets. And after all, they'd already cemented their branding. Anyone who would like Star Wars was familiar with the Star Wars universe. This created a new opportunity for the content marketing team. They would certainly need to create movie posters for each of the upcoming films. They also knew that superfans and collectors would buy replicas to hang on their own walls. So, why not give them a few Easter eggs? The word spread online that the Star Wars movie posters were chock full of secret designs. Of course, the fans scrambled to see if they could extract a few more drops of magic from their favorite film franchise. They were not disappointed. Clever designers recognized the outline of Darth Vader in one of the posters. The poster was still a great single panel image for the movie. But that revelation that there was a hidden message, the face that launched a thousand ships, or at least a thousand blog posts. Once the cork was off the bottle, even casual fans wanted to see it. Once again, the content marketing for Star Wars became remarkable and buzzworthy. It was more than just marketing. It was marketing that people wanted to share. It was a content asset that would be a marketing asset for fans that they would be actually willing to buy. Star Wars promoters didn't need to do much more than make a basic poster. They could have checked the box and hung the posters. But by creating something special for the fans, they exceeded expectations and created additional buzz. So, what can we learn from this? This doesn't work for every brand. There are categories that can't even consider doing anything quite this daring or creative. But then again, there was a time when selling insurance wasn't done with recurring characters in funny situations, like Flo from Progressive or Mayhem from Allstate. However, for the categories and brands that can do this, it's worth exploring. It's an opportunity, not an obligation. The first requirement is that the asset is effective. In this case, the movie poster has to serve the poster of promoting the movie. Star Wars producers have a solid understanding of their target audience. They also have a complex relationship with them. They know that whatever they create will be carefully analyzed and deconstructed. By seeding Easter eggs in the movie posters, they gave the audience something to discuss. Their assets literally transcended the poster medium and became part of the fan experience. Subliminal messages are seeded all the time. The marketers at Star Wars didn't invent the idea. Instead, they just found a way to create a great movie poster that would be shareworthy on social media channels. Brands with established fan bases, especially those with an enthusiast community, should consider how to contribute to the conversation. Those brands should explore ways to nurture and care of their, of their community. That is, don't just use the community as targets for message blasting. Think about how content can be used to surprise and delight your customers, and how this will turn discussions into much more. And now, back to our galaxy. It's easy to deconstruct and analyze Star Wars for content marketing purposes. We see the cumulative effect of decades of marketing with the benefit of hindsight. For every Star Wars marketing success, there are undoubtedly hundreds of failures. Lots of marketers and movie producers have tried to replicate the success of Star Wars. Few have succeeded and many have failed. It's also important to remember that we're looking at the final products. We can deconstruct the assets and try to understand the strategy, but that's just an educated guess. In reality, we know very little about the actual marketing strategies beyond what we've read on the books in the history of marketing and Star Wars. Consider this kind of deconstruction more inspirational and than actually historically accurate. But learning and creativity can still be fun and reach serious business goals. And that's a force that lives in all of us.